for Jesus up in this place tonight. Come on, if you love Jesus, stand to your feet and give him a clap of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. If you love Jesus, hallelujah. Has he done anything for anybody? Come on, come on. Yes, 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 yes. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Anybody else grateful in this house tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to uh, stand before you tonight. Welcome to First Wednesday. Come on, slap your neighbor high five and say, welcome to First Wednesday. On behalf of our senior pastors, Pastor Jason and Melissa McKinnis, we want to say welcome. If you do not know me, my name is Pastor Aaron, and this is my beautiful wife, Tina. Come on, stand to your feet, baby. Yeah, my... My sweet nothings, my brown sugar. Uh-huh, yeah, that's my girl, my buttercup. I keep going, baby, if you keep standing, I, you know me. I, uh, I tell you, Tina and I have uh, been attending here for almost 11 years. Elena was my, my youngest daughter. Elena was like three months old. We was carrying Elena around and, um, in a car seat. And... Uh, that's how long we've been around, you know, so there's some new faces and, but I'm so glad what the Lord has done in my life, right? You know, tonight we're going to talk about pour it out. And I remember if it had not been for someone pouring out, pouring into me, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. So I, I know all y'all been saved and sanctified all y'all life. Y'all probably been in church, but that's just not my testimony. <laughs> See, the Lord had to, had to pull me out of some places. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit. But the Lord had to pull me out of some places. So I remember I grew up in Carbondale and, you know, we would hang out on the strip. Everybody know where the strip at? There was this one club on the strip years ago, back in the late 90s, about 90s, 98. It was called the Funky Pickle. Yeah, I know it sounded a little rough, but man, we would get it in in the Funky Pickle, Pastor Jason. And the Funky Pickle is where me and Tina, we would be, we would be dancing and doing our thing in the Funky Pickle, right? But I'm thankful, I'm th I thank the Lord that it was someone that had the audacity to say, no, nah, you got a call on your life, bro. You ain't supposed to be here. You got a call on your life. What are you doing? You wasting your time. You wasting your family's time. And at the time we're, when I was going to the Funky Pickle, my little marriage was all out of whack. See, I couldn't go to the Funky Pickle on Thursday night because that was ladies' night. Y'all yeah, may know about ladies' night. See, all y'all been saved all y'all life. And I'm, going, I'm getting to the scripture here in a little bit. But I couldn't go on Thursday night because it was ladies' night, you know, because I got a lady already. So if I show up on ladies' night, you know, I'm going to be in some trouble. Mm-hmm. But what I'm trying to tell y'all tonight is there was someone that took the opportunity to share with me about the love of Christ, about my life has purpose, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing tonight, right? So there's hope. <laughs> Tina tell you, there's hope. There's hope. So my title tonight is called Poured Out. Currently, I work for a beverage company. That's my day job. I remember one year we conducted a soft recall on a particular beverage. I can't say what that is because y'all be like, what? We were made aware that this certain skew was not a quality of our company standard. I'm going somewhere. So we had to go out into the market, all the stores, and do some testing at these particular locations and do date audits, quality audits, and, and find these particular skews that were not in order. So this particular product, you didn't know it was bad until you poured it in a cup. 
I told y'all I was going somewhere. Now, this message might not be one of them shout at the rooftop messages, but this is what the Lord gave me for y'all tonight. Is that all good? Y'all cool? So, so, this, so, so, so this particular product, you, by the looks of the package, if I would look at it, I was like, man, that's sellable. I was telling my boss, man, from the looks of it, I feel like we can still, we can sell this, right? This is sellable. But it was until I popped the top, poured it in the glass, and there were some particles and some debris and some, some things that wasn't taste worthy, uh-huh, in the cup. And I was like, man, I could have missed that. So tonight, you have to be, you have to make sure that what you're pouring out has quality. I told y'all it wasn't going to be one of them shout to the rooftop messages. But what you pour out has to have quality. It has to be, it has to have a standard. Somebody say a standard. So what does living a poured out life really means? When we choose to empty ourselves of the weapons of our human nature so the Holy Spirit can fill us with tools that we can help us win and help others make it to the finish line. That's what it is. Somebody had the audacity to help me to the finish line, Pastor Jay. I guarantee you that I, I more than likely wouldn't be doing what I'm doing tonight if that particular person wouldn't have said, nah, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, no. You've, you, you've, you've got quality. You just don't see it. You, you, you've got quality. You've got substance. You've got purpose on your life. You may not see it right now. You might be, you hanging out in the funky pickle, but I'm going to have you in the church house soon. Uh huh. I'm I'm going somewhere, but see, I, you know. So when I was called, I was pulled. <laughs> Some of us have to be pulled off the bar stool. Some of us have to be. Yeah, come on. Some of us got to be pulled. Come on. Come on. You know, that was me. I had to be pulled. I had to be, I had to have someone grab me by the hand and say, no, nah, that, that, that ain't for you. So what I'm trying to express to you tonight is having a poured out life is so important. Second Timothy 4, 6 reads like this. It says, for I am already, I've already been poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure is at hand. So I would ask you a question tonight. What does your poor look like? What does your poor look like? You know, what, what, what does it look like when you pour it into a glass or you pour it into, you know, your prayer partner or if you get, you know, your best friend or somebody on your job? What does your poor look like? Does it have substance? Does it have debris in it? Does it have something of, of worthiness? Y'all gonna got quiet on me tonight. See, 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 love pours, but lust takes. I'm going somewhere to y'all with me tonight, Pastor. I, I might not get to preach again, so I might as well just go. Matter of fact, I'm going to be in the Bahamas next week anyway, so I'm going to feel all right anyway. I got my feet already almost in the sand. See, 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 see what I'm saying is, see, see, love pours, but lust takes. So what I'm trying to ask the question is, are you lustful or do you have love? See, my, when I say lustful, so y'all thinking automatically sexual, but it's not lust. It's not always a sexual thing. Some stuff you act like you can't live after because you've been lusting for it. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a certain job you're lusting after. Maybe it's Facebook or social media mm -hmm, that you're lusting after. See, love pours. When you love somebody, you're going to do whatever it takes to get them off the bar stool. Just like with me. Well, you know, they love me so much not to leave me there. You see what I'm saying? They love me that much to go and say, I'm grabbing you out. Matter of fact, sometimes you got to take them out. Uh-huh. 
So Jesus' life was all about pouring. That's what Jesus was. He was all about pouring. When he raised Lazarus from the dead in, in John chapter 11, he poured. When he showed up, he poured. When he called him out of the tomb, that's what he was doing. Are you hearing me? He poured kingdom. He voiced, he made a voice. So he poured into Lazarus, right? So when Lazarus heard and he poured into him, his cup got back. His cup was filled. Do you understand what I'm saying? His cup of life was poured because Jesus said, you know what? Now it's, it's, it's not your time to die. You know, you, you my friend. You my homie. You my homeboy. I'm not ready for you to go. So I'm going to pour into you. Because, see, Jesus pours in so we can pour out. Are y'all feeling what I'm saying tonight? See, Jesus pours into us so we can pour out. So when he went to the tomb and poured into Lazarus, it was for a purpose. So, so Lazarus would be able to pour out. The best Christian life is living a poured out life. If you're not living a poured out life, I don't want you next to me. You can't be in my circle if you're not living a poured out life. I don't want you because what happens is if you're, if you're not living a poured out life, then things of the world begin to creep in. Things that look, you know, what's familiar to you, you feel like, oh, that's God. No. Things that's always sometimes familiar is not always God. Because I feel like sometimes we replace God with the familiar. We replace God with the familiar, you know. You, you're supposed to be in his presence, but you're watching TV. You know, you're supposed to be in his presence, but you're watch, watching the soap operas, the young and the restless. I don't know if y'all so might too be, be too young for the young and the restless. Y'all remember the young and the restless? My gosh. I think that show, is it still on? My Lord. My goodness. But see, so you replace the presence of the Holy Spirit with something that you're familiar with. So, so where do we go or where do we get our pouring when someone has a thirst? Where? Where do we get our, our pouring? It's simple. Jesus poured in so we can pour out. So we have to go get our cup filled from Jesus in, our, in the presence of the Holy Spirit like we just were so we can be filled so we can pour out. The scriptures that I'm taking tonight is found in John chapter 12, verse 1 through 8. It's a very familiar passage. This passage illustrates for us the act of pure worship, the act of sacrifice, and it also act, it's, it shows us how some people oppose your worship. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there real quick. Some people will oppose your worship. What do I mean by that? When you having the best time in your life at the altar, I know it don't happen at this church, but sometimes that particular person is like, why, why in the world does it take all that? She done ran the aisles two or three times. You, you, you get what I'm saying? They're going to oppose your worship. They're going to be like, it, 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 that's too valuable. You know, that, that's just way too valuable for you to be, be thrown away. Yeah, We're we going we gonna to go there. So listen. John chapter 12, verse 1. It reads like this. Then six days before Passover. Somebody say six days. Because that's important. Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus, who, was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead, they made him a supper. And Martha served and Lazarus was the one at the table. He was the one at the table. So listen, Jesus shows up at Lazarus' crib to hang out, to have dinner, to feast. This is in tw the chapter 12. Now, y'all remember chapter 11, Lazarus was in a tomb. He was dead. He had no life. He was gone. But Jesus shows up because after he poured into his cup, Jesus said, hey, you having a party? We're going to come hang out at your house. Okay, so they're having a dinner and chapter in and, and verse three, it says, then Mary took a pound of very costly oil. Somebody say oil. oil. Then you say costly. They said this was like a one year's wage, the cost of this oil. 
that's kind of expensive. For me, when I'm thinking, of, if, I, if I'm thinking of, if it was a one-year wage, that's a lot of money, right? But then it didn't matter. It didn't matter to Mary. It didn't, it didn't matter. She anointed Jesus' feet, and she wiped his feet with her hair. I want to stop right there. She anointed his feet with this costly oil. And then she turns around and she wipes his feet, Jesus' feet, with her hair. Now, I'm going to tell you how in the porterhouse, hair, number one, my girls, which are here tonight, they can tell you, man, they got curling irons, flat irons. They got all the stuff, right? But to them, their hair is, is, man, you touch my hair, you might be getting yourself off the ground, right? I mean, see, when, when in, in, in the African-American household, I'm going to just keep it 100. In the African-American household, see, they got their hair did. They didn't get it done. They got it did. So, so when you get your hair did, that means you, you didn't, they put some work into this thing. Uh, you get what I'm saying? So... I remember when I was in, at home living with my mom and I had a little, little, little spray gun, a little squirt gun, and I accidentally sprayed and, and it got her, got her hair. Lord have mercy. I was seeing stars for a whole week. Why? Because she got her hair did. But it wasn't only because of that. It was her hair was her. her it was the, she felt it was valuable, man. This, this is her thing, right? So I'm thinking Mary... She could have called Martha, which is always serving. Y'all know Martha, right? We're going to talk about her. Hey, Martha, go, go hook me up with a towel. Martha, I know you got some towels in the back room. You've been washing clothes all day. That's all you do. Go, go hook me up with a towel. She could have easily done that. But she said, no, 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 no. I've seen it with my own eyes what Jesus can do. <laughs> she... She, she was like, she was like I, I've seen what this man can do. Why? Because number one, I'm familiar with this man because I've been at his feet multiple times. We're going to go there in a little bit. But, 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 but see, so, so what happens is we put our value on things that really, it's not that valuable when you get in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to talk about that. So she wiped her hair up with this oil verse 4 then it says but one of his disciples this is Judas Judas Iscariot whom betray who betray him said why was the fragrance oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor why in the world is he questioning her worship anyway number one the oil didn't belong to you my brother so why, if, why do you have the guts and the gumption to question how I worship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but he put a price tag on it, which got my attention. See, some of us, we look over this. He put a price tag on it. So to me, Judas might have been prowling around in her crib in the first place. He, he might have he been looking, uh, oh, I, I, I got my eyes on that because I want to take that somewhere and sell that thing. You know what I'm talking about? Have you ever had somebody in a house and they just looking around and you like, man, why? Sit still. I didn't, I didn't ask you to go in my bedroom. <laughs> Sit yourself down. They looking around like they coming back to take something, right? I'm like, oh, you can't come back. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. We're going to leave you at the door. So then this verse six, it said this, he said, not that he cared for the poor because he, he didn't, but because he was a thief and he had the money box. Mm. He carried the money box. So he wanted to sell it for his own gain. He wanted to sell it for his own gain game so but jesus said somebody say but jesus said see i love you jesus is like look we're gonna bring some order to this thing i don't care if you in my circle i don't care if we've been riding together for a while i i know who you are really judas i can tell you i'm speaking for you but i can tell because he said hold on hold on let her alone she has kept this for this day of my burial he knew it. 
That's why he was at the house. That's why Jesus came to the house because she kept this oil, this, this fragrant oil for his burial. For the poor, he said this, he went on and he kept it real. He said, for the poor would, will be with you always, but me, you do not have always. So I'm looking at this, this text and they said when she broke open the oil, Pastor Melissa, the fragrance just went in the air, went all over, all in the house. I don't know how big the house was, but it, it said when she broke it open, somebody say broke it open. You've got to break open your worship. Yeah, it's important that you break it open. See, some of y'all got it in your little, your little oil box on your shelf in your room. You know, and, and, you, and, and you're looking at it. Oh, it looks pretty. It's got some value. My parents gave it to me, right? But when you break open the oil, the worship, then Jesus can have his way. The Holy Spirit can really just, just fill the room. That's exactly what happened just a moment ago. I felt when, when they were singing, that the Holy Spirit just, just filled the room. He filled the room. Jesus pours so we can pour out. He pours in so we can pour out. So I want to ask you this question. What does your pour look like? Do you have the pour of Mary, Martha, or Judas? They talked about three people in this particular scripture and I feel like all three are symbolic to how most Christians act. I'm going somewhere. I believe all three have, have, are it's symbolic to how Christians, how they act. What drove this woman to give this sacrificial offering? She was preparing his burial, they said. Because of her sacrifice, her story is told to eternity. Matter of fact, that's why I'm sharing this story tonight. Because her act of worship. Jesus said, out of that act, baby girl, I, I, look, all generations is going to know your story of your worship. How you broke it over my feet and you had the audacity to wipe the oil up with your hair. You had the audacity. You didn't just stop with the oil. She took it a step farther and said, you know what? This is all about you. I don't need a towel. Matter of fact, Mary too bit Martha too busy in the kitchen cooking anyway. She's gonna get here too late. And I feel like sometimes we get to in the presence of the Lord too late. Why I say that is this. We come in here on Sunday morning, day in, day out, we worship. And sometimes Yeah, I'm going to say this. Sometimes some of us wait till the worship's over to get to the building. Some of us just come to hear Pastor Jason preach, but they forget about the worship. And, and, and Pastor Jason can preach. And some of us got it flip-flopped around. Maybe, maybe I'm going to just come worship and then when Pastor Jason get to preach and I'm like this. We have to get in the presence of the Almighty so he can work on our life. We do. Can I get an amen? amen? So, do you have a poor like Mary? We must, we must want more of the Lord's presence and not his presence, his gifts. Want more of, of his, his presence and not his gifts, his presence, right? See, so many, so often that we want the, just the gifts and the, the shiny things, the things that look pretty, but we don't want to go through the fire and get literally in his presence when he really can mold us and shape us to how we're supposed to be. Don't run after the gifts. The gifts, gonna, they, they'll come when you get in the presence, right? So we, we want the, and when I say the gifts, 
I'm not talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Some of running after cars and houses and, you know, uh, you, you know, men and, you know, a, man, a husband and a wife. No, get in his presence. Because when you're in his presence, there's the fullness of joy. There is the fullness of joy when you get into his presence. So when you have, if you're searching after the gifts, the gifts, they, 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 they'll sustain you for a little bit. But I'm telling you, the gifts, once they're gone, you feel like, man, what did, what's going to happen? So all three times Mary was mentioned in the scriptures, she was at Jesus' feet. All three times. Mary was familiar with his feet. And I know some of y'all be like, his feet, though, man. Them feet, man he probably had all kind of stuff on, on his toes and all. I don't know. Maybe he washed them off before he came in the house. You know, they wore sandals back in the day. I, I don't know what his feet looked like. But she was familiar with his feet. So that tells me that her posture, Pastor Melissa, her, she had a posture of devotion. She, she, she had a posture that, that, was, that, was, that was literally at his feet because when you're at his feet, you learn something. You know how, how Jesus moves when you're at his feet because you, 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 you can learn, he can teach, right? She spent a lot of time at his feet because Jesus, guess, he was always pouring. Remember, the fragrant oil was expensive, but it wasn't about the oil. It was about his feet. <laughs> The Lord showed me that. He said, it wasn't really about the oil. It was really about, about Jesus' feet when it was all said and done because she needed the oil to anoint for his burial, but it was about his feet, man, because see, his feet, he was always moving. He was moving. And I believe when you connect with Jesus, he will, he will get you to point A to point B. He will, he will take care of you when you move with him. So feet are important. They are. There, that's why she was always kneeled down. Her act of worship, that's how she, she would move was, was worship. Mary was worship. Somebody say worship. Mary was also delivered from people. Because I can imagine at the table, Jesus at the table chilling, you got Judas, his disciples hanging out, Lazarus, which he raised from the dead, chilling. And she, I believe she didn't make a point to go get the oil. I felt like it was like she didn't say, he going to be at my house in a week. I got this oil, and I'm going to go grab it and anoint his feet. It was one of those things when Jesus showed up, it was like the, when the presence shows up, supernatural shows up. Things happen. And Mary knew exactly why she had the oil, why she was hanging on to it when he showed up. That's important. When Jesus shows up, you know why. He, you get what I'm saying? Then he began to, this is why I'm here. When he shows up. So when he showed up, the oil meant something. It's, oh, now I'm putting two and two together. But he was chilling. But Judas was over there like, now, now, why is she doing that? Jesus said, it don't take all that. Jesus, come on, hold on, hold on. Jesus, we can sell that. We can get paid off of that. But she didn't care what Judas was saying. She didn't, she didn't care. She continued in her worship. So I just want to encourage y'all church folk tonight. So listen, when you're worshiping, don't care who's around. Don't care who's looking. Don't care who's sitting next to you. You get what you came for, right? That's why she was delivered from people because if you're not delivered from people, they will interfere with your worship. Yeah, because you're like, okay, if I do that, so-and-so going to get up and get mad or, you know, no, 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 no. When you are in the right posture, you're not worried about who's, who's watching. Yeah, yeah, you, you're not, you're not. Are y'all good? Okay, okay, okay. So she was delivered from people. She didn't care who watched. But I would ask you this, this other question. Do you have a poor like Martha? Martha was always busy. Jesus shows up at her crib to have a party. She was doing good, good deeds, 
She was probably washing dishes, compare, you know, preparing the meal. She was doing all that. But she missed out on the presence of the Holy Spirit because she was so busy, tucked away doing things, maybe bringing and, and, and serving. And that's one another thing. Serving is good, but you have to serve with the presence in mind. I'm just telling y'all what the Lord gave me. When you serve, you got to serve with the presence in, of, in mind. And what I mean by that, you have to put the presence first when you serve. And kids, if you don't have the presence of the Holy Spirit, I, I, man, I'm telling you, you won't like doing what you're doing back there. You won't like it. Matter of fact, you won't like preaching on Sunday morning if you don't like the presence of the Holy Spirit, right? So, you, yeah, you just won't like it, right? You have to have the presence of the Holy Spirit when you serve. Amen? So she was busy. The acronym for busy is being under Satan's yoke. Being under Satan's yoke. So what that means is that the devil's got you so, so busy. You're not reading your word. You're not praying. You're not interceding. You're not covering our church. You're not covering our pastor. Huh? Huh? You're not covering our leadership. Why? Because you're so busy. He's got you going. Now, Martha, and some people give, give Martha a bad rap. See, Martha was not doing bad things. She, you know, she, she, wasn't, she wasn't in the, in the back room, uh, Pastor Jay, uh, hitting a shot of Patron. You know what I'm saying? She, you know, Mar Martha wasn't doing that. Mar Martha, you know, Martha wasn't on Facebook watching stuff she wasn't supposed to be watching. M M Martha was, <laughs> Martha was doing <laughs> some. So you, seriously, she was doing good things. Yeah, y'all don't know what Patron is. See, I told you. <laughs> See, I left y'all. I lost some of y'all at Patron. Like they like, what in the world is Patron? Oh, my Lord. Okay, I'm going to just bring it down a little bit. She wasn't shooting some Jack Daniels, you know. She, didn't, she wasn't in a room sipping on a Bud Light. You get what I'm saying? She wasn't doing none of that. But, but she was busy, though. But are you hearing what I'm saying? So I don't want you to think that Martha was sinning, for say, doing sinful deeds and sinful things, sinful nature. That wasn't, that wasn't Martha. Martha... You know, she, she knew Jesus, but she knew of him. She, she knew of, you know, she knew of him. She, did, she wasn't in his presence like, like Mary was. Y'all feeling what I'm saying? So, so Martha, she was always busy. And I look at our own lives. We get so busy, myself included, either with work. Like today, I kid you not, I, I'm, my Wednesday is usually pretty, pretty, pretty smooth at work right but I felt like the enemy had me running past her so much today because he knew this word that I had you know that I was going to wanted to share and 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 I normally I get a chance to kind of catch my breath before on Wednesday I catch my breath right you know chill and hang out and then come, come to church but today wasn't like that I'm like Lord you're gonna have to you're going to have to do something, Lord. I need some energy. I, I, you know, I, I, I need you. But that's what, that's what happens when we're so busy. And I, I started and I start preaching to myself. Pastor Ellis, I, I, I started preaching to myself. I said, man, I, can't, I, I know I can't be doing and running and running and gunning. And I can't be doing all that. So I had to, I, I pulled my little car over at the Hux gas station when I was at work. And I, and I, I sat there, I said, you know, I'm not on break, I'm not on lunch, you know, I'm salary anyway, so y'all say he's still in time. Nah, <laughs> that ain't my testimony either. <laughs> hey, that's Judas. <laughs> so I pulled my little self over in the Hux gas station, Pastor Ellis, and I just had to just get at his feet for a minute. I, I, you, I, I'm in my car, y'all. I'm, I'm in my car. I'm, I'm, I'm in my little car, and I'm, 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 I had to get at his feet for a minute. So because I was just running, I was just, I just didn't feel like, I didn't feel myself. Anybody ever felt like that? So I had to get at his feet. So if I would ask you tonight, we talked about Martha. Do you have a poor like Judas? Now, this is when the rubber really, really starts hitting the road because 
Some, some of y'all probably like, you, you trying to say, do I have a poor like Judas? Now, Judas betrayed Jesus. He kissed him on the cheek. You trying to say, now, hold, hold on, hold on. Let me listen, listen to me. Because it was more to it to Judas than that kiss. Are you feeling me? It, it was more to the kiss of the betrayal. His, his, his poor was always off. He, he, he didn't have nothing in his cup to pour. But jealousy, arrogant, he wasn't trustworthy, he was critical. But this is where I want to I really talk about, about Judas. Judas was disrespectful. When, when he started disrespecting Jesus, the call on his life, the Messiah, right? When he started disrespecting Jesus openly, that's when... I feel like the betrayal really kind of started going because listen, he questioned Jesus at, at a table. He was at the tomb when he raised Lazarus. So, so why do you even going to question the Messiah? And you've seen the, you've seen him raise the dead in chapter 11, but now we in chapter 12 and he's sitting at the table and he had the audacity to say, no, hold on, Jesus. No, you're going to let her do that. This 300, we could sell this for 300 denarii and you got yourself, you sitting back, going to let her do that. He was disrespectful. So let's bring it into modern terms real quick. How often do we respect, disrespect leadership in the church? How often, and it can start off small. Usually disrespect starts off small. And then all of a sudden, it starts to grow. You start talking behind the back of the pastor. You start, you start nitpicking the leadership. Well, I would have did it that way. That's, that's exactly what Judas was doing. There was a spirit. Judas had a spirit. And I, I pray to God one day, Pastor Jason, preach on the spirit of Judas. Because I'm it, there's a lot of stuff there about his life that I can see the church going through, you know, not our church, but the church as a whole, because what happens is when you start disrespecting leadership, then betrayal really comes. You setting yourself up to betray your family pastor, your senior pastor, lay, 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 laity, you setting yourself up. See, y'all done got quiet. The spirit of Judas, it started off with disrespect. And that's one thing I learned. My grandmother used to always tell me, now, Aaron, you respect your elders. Now, now I don't care. You, you respect your elders whether you like them or not. You, you, you respect your elders. So I want to say this. Whether you like the pastor or the family pastor or the laity, whether you like them or not, you have to respect the call, the office that's on their life. You do. Now, I ain't telling you got to like them and, you, you know, throwing roses out when they walk the aisles. No. But you have to respect the office and the, the call that's on their life because what happens is when you start disrespecting the office, that's a whole nother ball game, church. You bring stuff on yourself that you don't need. You, you, Pastor James said, you mopping what I'm dropping, I'm gonna use that. You get what I'm saying? See, you bring stuff on you that you, you don't even need when you start disrespecting the office. So Judas, the, the betrayal was way before the kiss. It was. The betrayal didn't start when he kissed Jesus on the cheek. Judas, it started in the disrespect. It started when he didn't respect the kingdom assignment that was on Jesus' life. And I, can, I cannot understand this for the, for, the, for the most of me because I look at it like Judas walked. He was in his inner circle. Man, he, he was just, he, he knew Jesus, right? He knew how, he knew where he was going. He knew his calendar, right? He knew all of that. So 
for the life of me, I'm like, dude, how can you betray Jesus? I'm going to let that sink. How can you betray Jesus? Uh. Holy Spirit, you have your way right now. Just, just move by your spirit, Holy Ghost. That spirit of Judas be broken right now in Jesus' name. I command every lie, every attack be gone right now in Jesus' name. I speak life in the name of Jesus. Hey, you have, have your way, Holy Ghost. You just move by your spirit like you know how to move. Judas was judged. He was judged. He would judge folk. He judged Mary. Judas was having meetings after the meeting. <laughs> Does that sound like church? We had go in a meeting and we think everything cool, you know, everybody done agreed or whatnot. And then after the meeting, it's like, man, whoa, wait a minute. It's little pockets of meetings. Spirit of Judas. He was having meetings after the meetings. And what, what, what caught my attention, Pastor Jay, and, and, and Judas was undercover. Like, like Judas would just, he'd be missing. You know, all the disciples is hanging out and we eating together. And all of a sudden, Judas just dipped out. Like, where Judas at? You know why? He was, he, Judas, this was, this was the thing. Judas was talking to people that he didn't have no business talking to. Think about it. He was talking to folk, plotting. He was, he was plotting against Jesus, the, the, the son of man, the, 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 who, who he watched the, raise the dead, man. I'm, I, can't, I cannot, it, it, that, that fathoms me. It really does. But this is the thing. Let's bring it back to, to the church, church house. Somebody walks down to the altar, they, they get healed, they get saved, they get sanctified, they get blood washed, and then all of a sudden, it's like, uh, I uh, what's going on? Did, 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 did that really happen? And, and we started judging, and we started to look, and why? And we started to put two and two together. Well, did they really get their back healed? Or, or, you know, it was several people. Sunday morning, there was a word given because somebody had been poured into. Somebody had been poured into in our service, and it was a word given, and it was several people. Several people healed. Healed. But see, this is the thing. Judas, he got used to seeing miracles. And I think with the church, if we get used to seeing the miracles and sometimes we, that spirit of Judas come in, well, eh, it, it, it's just another miracle. It's just another dead man raised. How, how can you say that? that? That don't even make sense. Just another salvation, just another baptism. Spirit of Judas. See, see, so you see how, how, how Judas' little spirit could just kind of entwine and just kind of kind of wrap us up if we if we allow it to. Are y'all y'all hearing what I'm saying? So, so Judas, there, I feel like Judas, man, because see, Judas was the dude who had, he had the money, he had the money bag, right? Judas, I feel like, was waiting for Jesus to blow up, right? He was waiting for Jesus, Jesus to just be this big dude, and he was waiting for him to blow up, and he was, because I feel like he was trying to get paid. He's trying to get paid off of, off of Jesus, really, off of his actions about what he, what he would do, and, but, Jesus, but Judas, he didn't really have the, the audacity. He didn't want the presence of the Holy Spirit. He, he didn't want the worship part of Jesus. He only wanted the crowd. Yeah, hear what I'm saying? He wanted to crowd because when Jesus would draw these crowds, 
I'm sure, you know, offerings, they was, they was raising offers, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure, man, I'm, money probably was just being, but Judas probably, he probably took so much more money, we just don't even know about it. Because he was, Judas, man, I'm telling you, slick. Spirit of Judas. So what does your poor look like? I'm going to say it again. What does your poor look like? He betrayed. He didn't want the, the anointing. And he walked away and he made a choice to do what he did. Jesus was so loving that he gave Judas every opportunity to get it right. That's just how Jesus rolled. He pour in so we can pour out, right? So he gave Judas every opportunity and I'm almost done. I know the food truck out there. I hope she got some more left because I'm so sure hungry. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for some fries. Y'all with me? So I would ask you this in closing. Do you have a poor like Martha? Do you have a poor like Mary? Or do you have a poor like Judas? See, in Acts chapter 2, verse 17... It reads like this. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Somebody say the last days. Seth God. That I, being God, says, I will pour out. I will pour out. Somebody say pour out. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. That's all flesh. Everybody in this building. All, he said all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. So this is Acts 2.17. I, being God, said I'm going to pour out my spirit. So my question is to you. Will you be in the right posture? The right posture to receive the pouring. Church, are we in the right posture to, to, to literally receive the pouring in the last days? He said, in the last days, these are last days, Pastor Jay, I will pour. So if the word is the word and the pouring is the pouring, where is the church? Where is the church? Where am I? I make it personal. Lord, where am I when I get too busy? Where's my, Lord, where am I? I want to be more like Mary. My hair may not be that long, but I want to be more like Mary. I want to pour out. I want to pour it out. I want to pour my spirit out. Lord, I, want to, I just want to pour out before you. Empty me. Somebody say empty. Empty, empty me, Lord. So all over the building, if you would stand. If you would stand all over the building. Holy Spirit, I thank you for just moving like you know how to move in this place. Holy Ghost, I ask you to have your way right now. Dig it out. I, I hear you, Holy Spirit. Dig out. Dig it out. Everything that's not like you, God. <laughs>